Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Here we are doing another video for you guys. Um, I know you guys have been hearing a lot about this Saturn and Jupiter conjunction. We're going to go a little bit deeper into that and find out exactly how this is going to affect your sign. Once we're done with that, we're going to get into the forecast for 2021, all 12 months, uh, to see what is coming towards you for your sign. So let's get into this. Now, for a lot of you guys, I'm sure you guys seen my previous video, last year's video of Saturn and Jupiter going into Capricorn sign. Well, we're getting ready for this December 21st to go into Aquarius. What does this mean? Well, this is major transformative energy. It is not only um, something that rarely happens. <laughs> this is something that you're going to experience and perhaps your kids or the kids of your kids will not even experience this change. Um, why? Because Jupiter and Saturn conjunction um, usually happens every 20 years, 20 to 30 years. It goes, uh, it takes about 20 to 30 years for Jupiter and Saturn to go all into every single sign, right? Um, now, the rarity of this conjunction is that it takes about 200 years or so, give or take, uh, for it to go into a different element. So what do I mean by that? Well, Saturn and Jupiter has been sitting in the Capricorn sign, which is an Earth element. For the past 200 years, it's been in Earth elements, uh, Virgo, Taurus, and Capricorn. So it takes roughly around 200 years for it to transition into a different element. If we go back into time, uh, the Renaissance era, which was a massive explosion of painting, of creativity, of poetry, of people traveling in boats, right? The element of water. So this is all to do with imagination. This is all to do with our creative outlook. Uh, we fast forward into... Um, the element of fire, which was, uh, I want to say the 1800s, um, when we experienced a lot of, you know, wars, a lot of, uh, you know, taking things by force, you know, the, the representation of fire. Um, and then we move forward to uh, the, like I said, the, the, the era of the element of earth, which has been, um, sorry, the element of fire was in the 1600s, which was the wars and, and, you know, the pillaging and the, um, what's that other word? Um, the taking things by force and colonization, all of that, that was, you know, like I said, uh, 1600s. Um, and then we move into the earth element, which was from the 1800s up until now, which is all to do with structures. It's all to do with um, building, right? Uh, earth element, all to do with uh, taking earth's resources, um, etc. So now, and also the mass explosion of uh, businesses and, you know, like I said, building, which is all to do with earth element. So now we're transitioning into the element of air uh, in Aquarius. So this is massive, massive changes, expansion in science, um, humanity, uh, all to do with, you know, the respect for life, um, a lot of healing, you know. Uh, I'm sure you guys have been experiencing these couple of months and the culmination of uh, Jupiter and Saturn getting ready to leave the sign of Capricorn to be able to transition into Aquarius. Uh, so again, you know, uh, Capricorn, Saturn, um, the ruling planet of Capricorn, which is all to do with structures, with government, with authority. Um, and again, we go to that of saying, you know, explaining what that means. Every single sign has a shadow side as well as a light, just like anything in life and in nature. Uh, so the shadow side of the earth element is that of control, is that of, you know, um, really people stepping over people to become or to grow. And that's what we've been seeing the last couple of years up until now. 
Um, so again, a lot after the chaos, after the craziness, we go into this healing phase. We go into this phase of uh, the Aquarian era, which is, like I said, all about expansion, about the future, about thinking ahead, um, about humanity more than anything. So uh, major changes here. Now, this is going to be for you, Pisces. Um, so we have uh, Saturn and Jupiter conjunctioning in Aquarius in your 12th house, um, especially for those of you guys, Pisces rising, major changes, Jupiter rules your midheaven. Um, so these are changes with personal environment, the people that you surround yourself with, the people that you deal with on everyday basis. This is focusing on long term goals. Um, the 12th house is also self sacrifices. So again, uh, with Saturn, it's a new you can take this as a positive or a negative. So what I mean by that is if you have a tendency of self-sacrificing yourself at the for the good of someone else, uh, Saturn's going to shake things up there a bit. And it's going to keep giving you a cycle where you feel like you're being taken for granted or like people are not appreciating. And the reason for that is because Saturn is trying to shake you up, to make you realize, to come to the understanding that you can no longer do that. You can no longer continue to sacrifice your happiness for others. Um, now, if you are in the other spectrum and you have a tendency of being a little bit more selfish uh, and not thinking for others or not thinking of others, uh, Saturn's really going to bring that hammer down because, again, Saturn is the karma planet. Um, so... It's going to be repeating cycles where you are given the opportunity to put others' needs before your own. And if you don't learn from that, you will continuously keep dealing with these cycles until you get it. Um, so again, uh, this could be an open channel uh, for you in assistance, you know, and helping you to be able to ascend and go into a higher um, vibration uh, this is a lot of endings and are also starting something new. Saturn will also retrograde uh, in the middle of the year. And Uranus will also be sextiling your rising. So again, uh, Uranus is change and how we look at our outer world, how we view uh, certain, certain things in our lives. Um, this is major transformative energy. And like I said, Uranus also brings an element of surprise. So there may be surprises that come up that push you or that test you, but this is for a positive. Um, so again, like I said, sudden change. Pluto is also sextiling as well uh, with Saturn and Jupiter. It's about coming out of your shadow and finding the light, also having to face your inner demons. So what does this mean? This means that we were talking about um, shadow side, right? The shadow side and the light side. Shadow side is what we suppress, what we hold back, what we, you know, what has triggered us in the past, past traumas, uh, what life has taught us, how life has taught us as an example in regards to relationships and love. How were you taught that love was from the lens of your childhood, how you were treated or how you felt uh, in regards to your parents and the love of your parents? That's trajectory. <laughs> excuse me, that's a reflection of how you view partnerships when it comes to relationships. So if you had a father or a mother that was very selfish or that put their needs before your their partner's needs, that could be something that you're imitating. Um, that could be something that you, that's how you learned. Um, so it's about understanding that shadow side to us and healing through it to be able to ascend, to be able to go into the next cycle in our in our lives uh, in a much more healthy way. Um, and, and again, you know, with Pluto, it's a planet of transformation. It's sextiling your rising sign, major changes in regards to the body, especially for those of you guys with the rising in Pisces, um, losing weight. Um, if you're trying to lose weight, now is the time to do that. This is really going to impact and really show you uh, the results of this. Um, so, and again, with the rising, it's your body. So sex styling happening somewhere in the 11th house, uh, changing long-term goals and things that perhaps you didn't really think about the future. Now it's like you're laser focused in the future and building for the future. So this is major transformative type of energy all around. So this may affect 
uh, different areas in your life where uh, change is imminent to you, okay? All right, my lovely. So also wanted to put it out there with Saturn's energy, like I said, uh, this is to do with your karma. So for a lot of you guys ending karma cycles, for others of you, uh, your here's the thing though, Neptune, um, Neptune can also bring you love, uh, but be careful because you can see things clearly with Neptune transit. So what I mean by that is Neptune is a dreamy, it is that of, you know, fantasy. Um, so when we have Neptune energy coming in, and this can greatly affect relationships and partnerships, you may be lured or you may be enticed or you may be like someone sparks your interest, but there's an illusion to that. So what they're telling you here is that there's going to be a need to be careful in regards to the partnerships that you decide to uh, pursue for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that are single. Even those of you guys that are in a relationship, um, you can actually potentially, uh, you know, go after a specific person or individual that is not fully showing you who they are or you're not really seeing them or the broader picture until you're hurt or until your expectations are destroyed basically uh, so again be very careful with that also anything to do with secrecy you guys be very careful about that like i said if we connect that to marriage and commitment there may be certain things coming out in the open if you're the one that like i said temptation comes through for you be careful because things will definitely come out to the open okay all right so let's get into your reading pisces let's see what spirit has for all of you in regards to what's coming for 2021 spirit guides please step forward guide me allow me to see clearly and concisely please give me 12 sets of cards to represent 12 months of the year 2021 for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Let's see. Oh, we got cards popping out already. Okay. So let's get into it, Pisces. This is January, February, March. April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November and December. You guys definitely comment below if you guys enjoy these videos. Uh, a lot of effort and work goes into this. Um, and I try to have it ready to go before we hit the new year. Um, so if you guys enjoy these uh, videos that I do at the end of the year to predict or to look into the next year, Comment below and let me know so that I can continue doing this every single year um, and support our channel, okay? All right, Pisces. January, you have the Seven of Wands and the Nine of Wands. So for some of you guys, there's a situation where you're wanting to give up. You're putting your foot down. Uh, this could be an energy that it's almost like you've put a lot of effort or a lot of energy towards something that at this point you feel like it's not really fruitful it's not really to the best of your interest and you're ready to walk away uh like i said with transformations a lot of endings come um and i don't think it's necessarily a bad thing i think it's a very positive thing because you're making room for new beginnings you're making room for uh, this is something that i tell you know my clients all the time if there's no changes in our lives then you're not growing so unfortunately, sometimes we have to, uh, you know, end certain connections, certain um, cut people off, people that are not allowing us to be who we are 
Um, oftentimes, you know, people say, you know, I always want to see, some, you know, my friends or people around me do good. Yeah, but the truth of the matter is that sometimes people want you to do good, but they don't want you to do better than them. And that's something that um, we have to really understand on a deeper level, not on a superficial level. If a person, if you're going towards some type of achievement, towards some type of growth for the betterment of you, those that are around you, those that love you, those that care for you should want that for you. And if they don't, then they have no place in your life anymore and they perhaps have served their purpose already. So this is something to keep in mind, you guys. Now for the month of February, we have here the Hanged Man and the Empress. Yeah, I feel that for a lot of you guys, you're going to be experiencing almost like going into a new chapter in your life going towards new pursuits for some of you guys, even changing careers. Uh, for others of you, this could represent, again, like loosening the link with people that are no longer, they're no longer really bringing much growth into your life. Uh, there's a situation where you're going to feel in the month of February like you're unsure about a decision to make. Make the decision that is going to bring opportunity for you you have the hanged man and the hanged man again remember saturn and jupiter in your 12th house this is to do with self-sacrificing so if you have a tendency of putting your needs and your wants before other people maybe it's time that you refocus uh, with the empress card this could be a representation of seeing things from a different perspective for those of you guys that are mothers or fathers perhaps you've neglected your children Perhaps, you know, everyday routine, everyday life, busy, uh, feeling like you're being pulled towards different directions. There is much needed grounding here when we're talking about the mother or father figure to the children. Children may be something that uh, you're going to be experiencing in the month of February. For some of you guys, it could even be children that are rebelling. Um, for others of you, this could represent trying to force a situation. Um, when we're talking about, for some of you guys, it could it could possibly be trying to force uh, you know, a relationship that is not working and you're, you know, really wanting or desiring to have a child with the Empress card. The Empress card is birthing, giving life uh, with the hanged man. What they're telling you, stop forcing this. If it's not, you know, manifesting for you, perhaps it's not with the right person. Uh, so again, a lot of internalizing, a lot of going within um, and learning to balance certain aspects of your life where there may be a, a certain situation, as an example, career-wise, you may be feeling the pressure there and you kind of forget about everything else because it's so stressful. What they're telling you here is there's going to be a need for you to find that balance. Now, for the month of March, we have the Six of Swords and Ten of Swords. So there's definitely an ending cycle here. For some of you guys, you're pulling away from a connection that has... Um, really not giving you the fruits that you've been wanting or it's not manifesting for you and you're ready to set sail you're ready to move forward towards a new beginning a new change uh this is you choosing you pisces and sometimes we have to do that in life uh like i said with uranus this is this is a, a could be a sudden change something that comes to light that you're able to see things from a clear perspective and you're no longer willing to sacrifice yourself or your happiness now for the month of april we have the full card and the ace of swords so we go from a major uh transformative energy in regards to endings here and moving forward uh to a new beginning the full card with the ace of swords this is also enlightenment. This is also the 12th house um, also has to do, you know, it's a spiritual house. So for a lot of you guys, this is like really becoming more spiritually aware. For others of you, uh, this could represent um, even approaching uh, how you view certain philosophies in a very different way. Um, this is all to do with like coming to the realization of your higher purpose and walking towards that. Uh, walking towards, um, you know, goals and aspirations that you're trying to manifest for this year. And this is you like saying, you know what, I am going to believe in myself is what they're saying. Okay, so believing in yourself, being more confident and going towards your truth, going towards what you want to happen, 
what you want to make happen. Whether people agree with you or not, I see a lot of cutting of cords, of connections. This could be friends, this could be colleagues, this could be people around you um, that may not be okay with those changes or may not be okay uh, with this new path or this new beginning that you're doing, but it's not phasing you because you're moving forward. And again, you're making yourself, your sanity, and your connection to higher spirit um, a you're making it a priority now for the month of may we have here the two of cups and the hierophant for some of you guys this is deepening a connection or deepening a relationship taking it to the next level for some of you guys this could be commitment while for others you may be dealing with taurus energy um this could also represent um finding a connection or finding a person that is really attuned to not who you were, where you've been, but where you're going. This is a person that's going to motivate you. This could be a mentor. This could be um, someone that you highly respect and highly admire. For some of you guys, this could be a love partner that's coming in where this person is. Uh, there is a quality about them that is very much you highly respect, you admire on a deeper level. And I think that this is really a beautiful type of energy. For others of you, this could, like I said, if you're in a long-term committed relationship, this could represent taking it to the next level. This is marriage for some of you guys. Uh, for others of you, this could be moving in as well. Now for the month of June, we have the Magician card and the Seven of Cups. Pisces, for the month of June, I feel that there's going to be a lot of possibilities for you. There's a lot of opportunities opening up here. The Seven of Cups is, it could represent scattered energy. Uh, but with the Magician, this is almost like manifesting uh, the life that you want or manifesting those opportunities that are coming to you. I feel you a little bit confused. I feel you like not really knowing what to choose. What they're telling you here is follow your passion. Follow what you really, what makes your soul ignite what makes you excited what makes you just the thought of it gets you all excited and like just this giddy energy go for what you're passionate about make it about what your soul is telling you or trying to guide you because this is definitely going to be a pivotal moment for you i want to say the month of june is going to be very transformative in regards to um uh, in regards to the future and moving forward now, for the month of July, <clears throat> we have the Five of Cups and the Page of Cups here. So for some of you guys, it could be a reconnection. It could be a person coming back around, trying to communicate. Uh, for others of you, it could be just a representation of um, feeling a little bit overwhelmed. I see you guys uh, for the month of July feeling like you're on this new path or on this new journey there's a lot of stress um and i feel you doubting yourself and what they're telling you here is the motivation for you for 2021 is keep pushing why because we are always tested when we are about to receive that manifestation and if fear overcomes you or overtakes um the energy of expectancy then there is a blockage that is created so what they're telling you here is just keep pushing you will start to see the manifestations you will start to see major transformation happening with you and in your life um do not doubt yourself okay because i feel that there's a need for you to believe more in yourself there is a need to have faith in yourself they're talking to me about confidence so i feel that for the month of july your confidence may be, you know, may be tested. Um, you may feel threatened um, uh, with a certain individual. You may feel like um, there is something about them that threatens you or that brings up your insecurities. And what they're telling you here, you are a being of light. There is no need to question or to doubt yourself. Uh, there is no need to feel like, you cannot really submerge yourself in who you are and empower yourself because of it, okay? So um, very important message there. 
Now for the month of August, we have here the star card and the five of swords. So for some of you guys, again, I feel that there may be a feeling of um, almost restriction here. And this could be Saturn's energy. Remember, uh, Saturn, Jupiter is all about expansion. Jupiter is all about abundance, growth, um, wanting to give you gifts, wanting to give you blessings. But Saturn energy there is also restrictive. It's, you know, Saturn is like, I'm going to give you the blessings, the manifestations you want but only through hard work, only through blood, sweat, and tears. Are you really in it? And if you are, you have to keep pushing. You have to keep going. So again, for some of you guys, you may be questioning yourself with this, uh, with these two cards, and, and then telling me about confidence. Um, and then we go into the month of uh, August where you're feeling like things are not happening the way you want them or as quickly as you want them to happen. Uh, this is restrictive energy. Again, the five of swords can indicate, um, you know, really getting into it with some people. Don't allow people to get you out of character, Pisces. Don't allow people to get the best of you or the better of you. Um, if it's a situation where uh, you're dealing with a relative or someone around you that is really triggering you, walk the hell away. Do not entertain that type of energy because with the star card, it's like keep yourself aligned. Keep yourself to what you're, the path that you're walking towards. Do not be petty. <laughs> Five of Swords is like fighting back and forth, but it's egocentric. It has to do with ego. So you got to shed that type of energy away from your life. Now, what was this? June, July, August, September. So for the month of September, major changes here. So for September, you have the Emperor card and the Tower. For some of you guys, changing careers. For others of you, uh, going into a different company. For others of you, very transformative energy, but in a positive. Why? Because there is some type of manifestation that's happening, but it's only going to come from, I feel that it's going to be a situation where you feel like, I can't believe this is happening. And it's like, it's, you're seeing it as doomsday. Um, but then, but then a blessing comes through. So I feel that for some of you guys, if you're in a situation where you're in a profession or you're in a company or you're in a career where you feel stuck, um, there may be a situation that arises that is very, very surprising or unexpected. Remember Uranus type of energy. Um, it, for some of you guys, it could be that you get laid off or it's just a very uncomfortable situation. But I feel that the ultimate goal here is for your growth. So it's like you weren't going to take the initiative. So it's the universe saying, you know what? We're going to do what we have to do to get her or get him out of this energy to push them forward to, the, to, to where they should be. Um, so it's kind of like a situation or a scenario of where you lose your job or you get fired or they lay you off. And then two days later, like you get a call from somewhere you applied like a year, two years ago. And they want to hire you on the spot, that type of energy. And I feel that it's ringing more true to who you are or what you want or what you want to be doing. So it's setting you on a new path that is going to be ultimately beneficial for you. And it's a blessing in disguise. All right. So that was, what was that? June, July, August, September, October. Sorry, you guys, I have these all down here and we're doing them freehand. So, all right. So for the month of October, we have the five of wands and the death card. So again, yeah, I feel that for some of you guys, this situation is going to be something to do with work um, for the month of September and October. And this could be, like I said, there is a situation that is arising right here in September where you feel like it is a bad thing. Um, but the positive in it is that we have the emperor card here. So it's a transformation that is going to give you more structure that is going to give you more standing, more stability for some of you guys, uh, setting out to start your own business with the death card. There's a major transformation. This is Pluto's energy. Uh, this is transformative. It is a new way of living, a new way of making money with the five of wands positive energy if we're talking about business or starting your own business because this is people trying to get you people trying to come to you clientele growing that type of energy but the death card can also represent 
uh, some type of ending link where there was an inner struggle for some of you guys, finding your truth, uh, finding or believing more in yourself. This is where you start to get more confident in yourself and walking away from what is not working for you no more. Now, for the month of November here, we have the Justice and the Ace of Swords. Sorry, the Ace of Wands. So there is a situation that is becoming balanced. There is justice on your side. Uh, for some of you guys, you may be dealing with a Libran type of energy uh, or a fire energy, Ace of Wands here. Uh, this is a new beginning. This is a new beginning to balance you. Uh, this is bringing balance. This is a choice that you're making for some of you guys. For some, it could be deciding to walk away from a relationship where it's become toxic here and you're setting ways for a new beginning where there is an unexpected turn of events. Uh, for some of you guys, this could be a relationship that starts to unfold um, because this is passion being ignited, but also in a much more balanced way. So, um, and a new beginning for some of you guys. If this is in connection with this job or this job issue, I feel that finally there is an opportunity for growth and advancement here that is going to be very, very much favorable to your cause or to your higher purpose. And finally, we end the year of 2021, December, with beautiful cards, Pisces. This is the Sun card and the Three of Cups. Uh, celebratory type of energy. Uh, these are blessings being bestowed upon you. This is uh, being able to view life in a very different aspect and being more grateful, more uh, positive, more optimistic with the Three of Cups, really enjoying the blessings or enjoying uh, the fruits of your labor, uh, being able to look to the past and realizing how far you have came. Beautiful reading for you, Pisces. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, comment. Let me know if you guys enjoy these videos so that I can continue doing them every single uh, end of the year to prepare you guys to kick off the new year. I wish you guys the very best. Happy holidays, my lovelies. Love and light to all of you guys, and we'll see each other soon. Bye.